Hi YouTube and welcome back to my random thoughts on Thursdays. This week I'm going to talk about well-known child-free celebrities. So recently um, I think Jennifer Aniston was interviewed uh, and she talked a little bit about uh, being child-free herself and you know the fact that um, women's role in society these days is less about uh, being a mother uh, than it used to be. I mean, it was in the past almost guaranteed that unless you were barren, um, that you would eventually get married and have kids. And, you know, it was very, very rare that a woman would not get married and have children. And it was just kind of assumed that, you know, all women were going to be mothers someday. Um, and that assumption is no longer you know, that clear anymore. Uh, clearly there's there's a, a growing movement, of, people are calling it a movement, it's not really a movement, but there's a growing amount of women who are becoming aware of the fact that they actually have a choice that they can make, that they can actually choose not to have children. Um, I've made that choice myself. And um, people, some people still look down on those of us who decide not to have kids because of whatever prejudices they have. But, in general, it's no longer the stigma that it used to be to be a childless woman. And that's one of the reasons why we've opted to call ourselves child-free and not childless, because the childless, it implies that we're missing something in our lives. And, well, we don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, you know, and childless was the term that was used for women who were barren or whatnot. Um, and didn't really, they didn't really make the choice of not having kids, they just, they physically couldn't. You know, perhaps they would adopt children and that kind of thing. And in fact, you know, many couples where it turned out that one or both of them couldn't conceive, you know, were, weren't able to conceive a child together, um, they would adopt kids just so that they wouldn't have the stigma of being childless. Um, and so that's, you know, again, not really, um, not really an issue nowadays. I mean, if you really, really want kids and you can't have them, you know, obviously adoption is still an option. Um, in vitro fertilization is often, there's so many options out there for people who really want kids. And if you really want kids, you know, more power to you. It's, you know, it's, it's a choice. It's a choice to make. Um, and to be perfectly honest, not all women want to make that choice. You know, we want to choose not to have kids, and in many cases we don't. And so Jennifer Aniston is, is one great example of a woman who has chosen not to have kids. And clearly it, it made an impact in her marriage, unfortunately, with Brad Pitt, because clearly he wanted kids. In fact, I still remember the interview where I was like, uh oh, these two are splitting up. I just knew it, because there was an interview with the two of them, and they were asked, so when are you gonna have kids? And he was like, oh, I just can't wait to have kids. I want like a half a dozen and all this stuff. And he was like all sorts of excited about it. And she just kind of looked at him like, wait a minute, we haven't talked about this yet. <laughs> and it was like within a couple of months or within about six months or so from that interview, they split up. Um, I know it was during the same time that he was filming um, with Angelina Jolie, I think it was Mr. and Mrs. Smith or something like that. Um, and I know he made a connection with her. And obviously, Angelina already had a bunch of kids that she'd adopted. And then the two of them got together and then they had their own kids as well. And so he's happy as a clam having all these kids. But obviously, Jennifer, she didn't. And, you know, that that's one thing I think, you know, maybe they should have talked about that before they got married. <laughs> uh, I think that's an important point. I don't think everyone realizes that they're not going to be on the same page when it comes to kids. And um, I actually used to make the assumption, oh, kid, men don't really care if they have kids or not. I, may, I had made this assumption, and then when I started going out there and dating, I was shocked how many men, it was like a deal breaker for them. No, oh, I want kids. I want to, you know, further my, my genetic line and all this stuff. Uh, I had one guy tell me that. That was, that was a, like, practically quote out of his mouth, like, furthering his genetic line. Uh, it's like, okay, whatever, just not with me. And uh, and so I just you know I just think that's interesting that you know people nowadays it's it's an issue you can't just assume that the woman you're gonna marry is gonna want kids and at the same time women who don't want kids you can't just assume the guy is going to not want them either you need to talk about this it's an important topic it's up there.
there with religion and politics and that kind of thing. You know, the big ones where, you know, if you don't, if, if you're on opposite sides, you're going to fight and <laughs> eventually break up because you just can't see eye to eye on the topic. So it's better if you're kind of somewhere in the right, in the same ballpark with a lot of these kind of bigger issues. And so, you know, again, you know, Jennifer Aniston's one example. Um, it's my understanding, I think Renee Zellweger is child-free. Um, uh, Christina Hendricks from Mad Men is child-free, and she's actually been kind of vocal about it as well. Uh, one famous one who is child-free is uh, Betty White. I mean, she's in her 90s, there's no way she's ever having children at this point, and since she's never had children, it's pretty... Uh, pretty clear that she's obviously made a choice not to have kids and you know more power to her it's like you know she was able to focus on her career and and have a fabulous life and she's devoted her life to animals uh, I know she's a big advocate of spaying and neutering and and um, just kind of uh, PETA type of uh, things. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I've got some issues with PETA though. Um, I don't know if she actually advocates for PETA, but I know she's spayed neutering and just, you know, pro cats and dogs and, and, and um, against animal cruelty and that kind of thing. I don't know if she's pro PETA or not. Uh, and PETA, that PETA is a completely different topic <laughs> entirely, um, but I have issues with their organization. But be that as it may, you know, more and more women are, you know, even celebrities are coming out and saying, hey, you know what, I'm child free, I'm proud of it, I'm happy without kids, uh, if you want kids, you know, you're fine, you're, you know, be, be happy with it, but don't ask me to start having kids just because I'm a woman, you know, and so I'm, I'm glad that there's role models out there um, emerging in, in society where more and more young women, um, you know, are becoming aware of the fact that they can actually choose if they want to have kids or not. And just because, you know, I'm child-free doesn't mean I'm some kind of sexual nymphomaniac slut that just goes around, you know, that I'm married, obviously. Um, and yes, I dated quite a lot. I didn't sleep with every guy I dated. Um, that would have been disturbing um, because I went on tons of first dates and never went anywhere past that and I am not the kind to um, sleep on the first date. It just wasn't my kind of thing. I'm just not that kind of girl. Um, I kind of really liked to make a connection with someone before I got to that point and very often the connection didn't happen so yeah let's just let's just say the amount of guys I went on dates with and the amount of guys I slept with is just you know very very different in, in portion there. Um, but, you know, obviously if you don't want kids, birth control becomes a big issue. And that's why the whole Hobby Lobby thing has been a big issue. Because more and more women want control of their bodies and their reproductive choices and everything. And so it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a hot topic right now. I can kind of see both sides a little bit. Um, but I'm definitely more on the side of the female employees of Hobby Lobby and like it, it's, you know, my employers have always covered um, birth control that I've had. Now I'm self-employed so um, obviously if I, if I get health insurance, individual health insurance and stuff, I mean my, my husband's empl previous employer, their health insurance covered birth control. I, not that I need it. Um, I had uh, I had myself sterilized <laughs> quite a long time ago, but you know if I hadn't done that, I would still be on birth control right now, and I you know I I'd insist on being able to, to help pay for it. Um, you know now of course if I was making enough money, it wouldn't be such a big deal. You know that's you know, but people who work at places like Hobby Lobby, they're making minimum wage. You know some of them might be making a little bit more than minimum wage, but for the most part, they're making minimum wage and. And th these medications are not cheap. <laughs> um, and then the, I think my biggest issue there is the the IUD being one of the ones that they didn't want to cover. Not all women can um, take hormonal birth control. That's that's one of the big central issues there. Is not all women can take hormonal birth control. And IUD, uh, the copper IUD, is like their only option. And copper IUDs are very expensive. Uh, much much more expensive than just taking the pill. And so if you're living paycheck to paycheck on $7.50 an hour or whatever minimum wage is right now, there's no way you're going to be able to afford to spend, I don't know how many hundreds of dollars it is, to get that IUD implanted. 
And so what do you do? You know, you just become um, abstinent and just never have sex ever. Uh, you know, I guess if you're a devout Christian that might be, you know, an option. But, you know, not everyone wants to, you know, uh, become a nun, basically. It's, you know, this is the 21st century, you know, we're supposed to have sexual freedom and everything. And it shouldn't be shameful to talk about that or to, you know, say, hey, you know what, I, you know, look at that hot guy over there. I slept with him last week. You know, it's it shouldn't be shameful to do that. I mean, guys do that all the time. It's okay for a guy. Hey, look at that hottie over there. I slept with her last week. You know, and 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 he gets congratulated while the woman gets put down for that. Don't even get me started on that one. Anyway, um, so I just kind of wanted to to kind of talk about that a little bit today, and then I just want to make an announcement. Um, that I have launched a forum now for uh, child-free women. Um, I call it child-free ladies. It's childfreeladies.com. You'll see the link down below. Well, it, this isn't a link. It's just a text. I, I can't put links uh, in the annotations that are not my um, website that's tied to my account. So uh, it's a YouTube limitation. But there'll be a link down below in the description below. And, and that's just the website, is childforladies.com. Come check it out. Um, if you are female and you want to interact uh, with other women, um, I just launched it, so there's not a lot of members yet. And most of the child-free sections on the forum I have made private, so you do have to register in order to interact. Um, I do have one section um, called Guest Lounge where you can interact and you can post without registering. And then um, there's other sections that you can at least read uh, without registering. But then the bulk of the forum is going to be private because I want to respect women's privacies and things. Because, you know, knowing that it's, it's women on there, I want to avoid um, stalkers and, and uh, other just kind of bad things um, happening to any of the members. And so, and, and I know some people are very sensitive about it. They don't want to be posting something in a public forum uh, that can show up on Google and, and other search engines and that kind of thing. So uh, I want to try and keep a lot of that private. So, but come check it out. Uh, you know, if you just want to just say hi in the in the guest lounge and not register and and just kind of you know get a feel for for the members and everything. Um, that you know, like I said, it's brand new. There's not that many members yet, but you know, I'm I'm welcoming um, pretty much anyone who wants to come and chat with us uh, and and things. The guest lounge will be open to everybody. And you know, if you're if you're a member and things, you know, I've got rules posted so you can re read through the rules and stuff. Um, I'm trying to keep it pretty loose and informal and everything, but obviously I've got to have some rules because there's always going to be trolls out there, and I want to at least have the rules established now so that if there's a troll showing up, you know, the, it's it's written down, and if they didn't read the rules, then tough cookies. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's all I have for this week. And sorry I haven't been posting every week. I've just, I've been busy. I've been dealing with some depression. So I haven't had the motivation as much. And so I just, I'm sorry. But I I will try and get back on a schedule. Same for my gaming videos as well. I'm not, I'm, I'm falling behind on those real bad. And uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Anyhow, until next time. <laughs> I'm hoping next week, but I'm not promising. Um, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>